Hey guys, Ivan here, and this video we are starting with a physique update of Mohamed Shaban, who placed second in the last two shows he did, California Pro, where he lost to Patrick Moore, and then also Puerto Rico Pro, where he lost to Akeem Williams. If he won those shows, if the judges gave him the first spot and the other guy the second, nobody would probably have a problem with that, because it was very close. And right now, he looks absolutely ridiculous. Now this guy, the problem with him, as the judges told him, as he is saying, basically, is the detail in the back. But me personally, I can just see the lack of detail everywhere. Chest, quads, shoulders, and back too, of course. He is conditioned. He is shredded. You can see the vascularity, you can see the thin skin, so he is peeled. Like, there is basically no fat left on his body. But it is about the muscle. The muscle just doesn't have those deep cuts, deep striations. I guess that's it. I don't think there is any subcutaneous water here or any fat. I think it's just the kind of muscle he has. Is it because of the genetics? Is it because of the sight enhancement oil or whatever? I don't know what is the reason behind it, but he doesn't have the deep cuts. Now the question is, does he have to work on improving that? Does he need to change that? Or can he win a show like this? How do you think he really needs to change it? I mean, yeah, it's a flaw, but other than that, what other flaws does he have? He's pretty much perfect, complete. Like, arms, shoulders, chest, legs, back, he has it all. Tiny waist as well. I mean, he has it all figured out. And he is growing so rapidly. I listened to his interview and he basically started training like five years ago. Training, lifting weights, right? And now he's a professional bodybuilder, he's basically gonna, he's probably gonna win the show and compete at the Mr. Olympia this year. He also actually competed at Mr. Olympia, I think, like two years ago or three years. It could have been 2018. Uh, yeah, he won, I think, like Kuwait Pro or something, and then he went, he went to the Mr. Olympia, but he was like 220 something at that show, and now he's in his 240s. So he's much, much bigger, he gained so much more muscle. And as you can see, the, the description of this photo, you can see how driven he is. He's basically not gonna stop until he until he wins a qualification. So he's gonna go hard at Chicago Pro and he's gonna present a trouble. A big trouble for Hunter Labrada. I mean Hunter looks amazing right now, but look at this guy. This is freakiness. This is this is freaky physique. What Hunter has is a complete package. He has the completeness. But there is no freak factor, wow factor like Mohammed right here has. Look at his physique, it's really freaky, right? Yeah, Hunter's photos are not exactly under some crazy artificial lighting, but is Hunter gonna be the winner in 10 days? Could be, probably, most likely. I don't really see anybody else beating him, but again, what I was telling you before, he has the completeness, and it's probably gonna be enough to grant him the victory. But there is no freak wow factor, right? While Muhammad absolutely does have it, and it feels like it's gonna be a different version of him at a Chicago Pro, much better than the previous two versions. It seems like he's progressing with every show he does, so Hunter is gonna have his hands full. And not only with Muhammad, but also with Charles Griffin, for example. Just look at this guy. I mean, I believe he's gonna be third. I'm expecting Hunter to win, and Muhammad will probably be second again, unfortunately. And, uh, and, uh, and Charles will be third, but it could go either way, really. I can see both of those two guys win the show. So here we also have a kind of a similar case. I mean, uh, Charles has a lot of freaky body parts, like arms, like back, but he's not complete. Look at the legs here. His legs are quite tiny. So again, completeness versus wow factor, but Muhammad actually has more of a completeness. He, he's pretty complete, let's be honest. Uh, look at Charles' back. You can see it not only from the side, but from, a, from an angle that's like between the side and the front. You can see the back of his back. You know, not just the lats from the front, but you can see the entire back from this angle. Just uh, insane how thick his back is. This guy has so much thickness, it's insane. And I'm sure you already saw this photo of himself guest posing about a week ago. And here also, he looks crazy dense. I mean, the chest, the arms, the shoulders. You cannot really see the back. I think you can see a little bit of his back <laughs> even in this photo. It's right there between his right delt and right tricep. I think there is a little part that's not actually his arm, but his back is just bulging. I, I could be wrong, but it looks like it. Because this guy's back, especially that upper back area of traps, rhomboids, it's absolutely ridiculous how big it is. So we'll see how Charles Griffin is gonna do at the Chicago Pro, but he will give us a show, for sure, against Hunter. 
All right, so let's go in about 10 weeks from now. Let's not talk about the most present events. We're gonna see in about 10 weeks Nick Walker on the stage. He already qualified himself for the Mr. Olympia by winning a third show, third biggest show in the world by reputation, the New York Pro. And right now, he looks absolutely crazy. I mean, look at the density of this guy. So he posted this photo and his caption was, I train to win. And it seems like this kind of attitude, this kind of mindset pissed some people off. For example, Sergio Oliva. You guys saw the drama. If you haven't, go ahead and check the video out. I have an entire video on this. And um, he also said, I mean, Sergio said that William Bonac meant Nick when he said, uh, when he talked about overhyped dreams. And basically what Sergio said is that William Bonac was also upset and offended. Because Nick was saying he is going to win, he is training to win, he is confident he can win. <laughs> and so basically what Sergio said is that William Bonac and the other top guys got offended because of this, because of his confidence or whatever. I don't know, it makes zero sense, but that's what Sergio basically <laughs> said. And now we have a comment from William Bonac. He says, Nick Walker looking solid. And he tags Arnold Sports and he asks them, are you sure you're ready for this? So it seems like William Bonac either wanted to sort of make things nice with Nick Walker, even though he never really said anything bad to him, or at least not publicly, and Sergio kind of made it look that way. So was it false that William got offended? Maybe he always liked Nick Walker and he liked him being so positive, optimistic, whatever, I mean, uh, confident. Maybe it was not the case what Sergio was saying. Maybe just William Bonac wanted to make things clear that he has nothing against with Nick Walker. Or could it be that William Bonac is sucking up to Nick now because he said the bad things? I don't think it's the latter. I think it's the former. I think William Bonac probably never really said anything bad about, about Nick. I think Sergio just kind of uh, assumed some things and he was offended. He didn't like Nick being so confident, claiming he's gonna win. And I think Sergio said some things that weren't exactly true, because why would William Bonac say things like this if he if he didn't like Nick and that what Sergio said was true? So you guys be the judge, you tell me what you think was the case, but as you can see, William Bonac and Nick Walker are fine, there is no beef between them, the only beef is between Sergio and a whole bunch of other guys, and uh, as far as William Bonac versus Nick Walker, basically no, no beef there, no rivalry. We'll see who's going to place higher at the, at the Arnold Classic. I'm really curious to see what's going to happen. Can Nick Walker actually surprise us and win this show? Actually, I wouldn't be too amazed, guys, honestly. I mean, it can happen. Look at this guy. He looks like an absolute freak of nature. So we'll see what's going to happen in about 10 weeks from now. But you can see. Tell me what you think about this. William Bonac, Sergio Oliva, Nick Walker, what is going on? Alright, also talking about the Arnold Classic, we gotta mention the Arnold Classic competitor, Rolly Winkler, who is probably gonna do another show before the Arnold Classic, it seems like. Because he did a Q&A, and I absolutely love this q and I'm gonna show you a couple of other questions and his answers, I think they are hilarious, but uh, this was the most interesting part, uh, somebody asked him, what show are you doing? And he said, next week everybody will know. So we already know it's gonna be Arnold Classic, but Arnold is in 10 weeks, and it seems like he's already basically show ready, one, two, possibly max, three weeks out, so he says next week everybody will know, I mean we have Chicago Pro in 10 days, will he jump into Chicago Pro or some other show? I don't know, we'll find out next week, but uh, I don't think it really makes a lot of sense for him to risk it by doing the most competitive show after Mr. Olympia, and this one is really freaking competitive, Arnold Classic, so if he places second in this show, which is very possible, it's really hard to win this show, he's not gonna be able to do the Mr. Olympia, so why would he risk it? Of course, he's gonna do another show. It's gonna be Chicago, it's gonna be another show, he has... Portugal this week, maybe he's gonna jump into that one, that would be an easy qualification, very very easy qualification for him, I don't know, I don't know what his plans are, but I'm pretty sure he's gonna do uh, another show, yeah, and you can see it based on this, based on this story, he's probably most likely doing another show, which one is gonna be, we'll find out. So I wanted to show you a couple of these very interesting uh, answers of Rolly, so the question was best exercise to grow biceps, and Rolly's answer was rather vague, he said the bicep curls. <laughs> well, he's not wrong, but I'm sure the guy was expecting a little bit of a different answer. 
This one is rather curious, because I don't know if he was serious or not, but the question is, at what age did you start going to the gym? And his answer is 27. Was he really 27 when he started training? I never heard of this story before. I mean, that's really late for somebody to start hitting the gym and to become a potential Mr. Olympia winner, one of the top pros for sure. It's, it's weird. I don't know if this is true or he's just being sarcastic. I don't know, for some reason, joking, having fun fooling around. You guys tell me. I mean, this entire Q&A of his was pretty hilarious. It looks like uh, his sponsor made him do it because he did promote them. When somebody asks him, what is the best way, what is the best BCA, blah, blah, and he always tags his sponsor. So, I don't know. It seems like he was just bored and lazy to do this, but he did it anyway. And I guess he was a little bit... Uh, Trying to be a little bit funny, trolling his fans. I don't think he started training in the gym at 27. Maybe he did. I never heard this story before. If you guys have any idea about this, tell me down in the comment section. Also, this was interesting. Someone's question was, what is the secret of those arms, man? And his answer is, no secret, train hard. <laughs> and uh, I guess he's not wrong with this as well. But I don't know if he was trying to be sarcastic and funny by, by being that way. Or this is just the way Rolly is typing, the way Rolly is responding to his Q&As. It's just Rolly. I don't know what is the case, but I but it made me laugh. I don't know about you guys, but it made me laugh. Alright, next we have Peter Molnar. Now, this guy is the best bodybuilder in Europe, basically. Aside from Michael Crizio, but in classic physique, no doubt. This guy was so is so genetically gifted with those crazy, crazy small joints. Look at the look at his joints on his arms, and also the small waist and just the shape, the, the entire structure, just so freaky. And I was talking about this, I was wondering when is he gonna compete again? I think he is qualified for the Mr. Olympia 2021. He qualified last year by winning a show, and now he got an invitation for the Arnold Classic UK, which is in Europe, and it is the IBB Pro League show. So he's a professional now in Classic Physique, and he got a special invite. And I really hope he's gonna answer this call, but it's not about answering the call or not, it's about him either preparing for a competition or not, because there is really a lot of time until this show. So if he was planning on competing, he got the special invite. If he didn't, then he probably is not going to accept it. But if he did, we're going to see him at this show. And that's a chance for him to win the Arnold Classic. If he does that, he is going to have a lot of momentum coming into the Mr. Olympia. This show is a week before the Mr. Olympia. At the Mr. Olympia, he will be facing a lot of top guys, a lot of great guys. And most of all, Chris Bumstead. Who can beat Chris Bumstead now, today? Anybody that's competing at the Mr. Olympia already is not even close to actually beat Chris Bumstead. But this guy, though, seems like has all the potential to actually achieve that. I don't know, maybe when he stood next to Chris, he would get smoked. I don't know, I have to see them both on the stage. But we haven't saw him against the other top Olympians, so there might very well be the chance. We'll see, I hope he's gonna respond to this, to this invite and we'll see him on the Arnold Classic UK stage, October 1st to 3rd. And finally, I'm gonna show you a physique, <laughs> not really a physique update, a lag update of Chris Bumstead. It's not really much to talk about, I mean, it's not really a physique update, and it's still a lot of weeks out of Mr. Olympia, so, you know, Chris gets much more impressive as the time goes on, as the days and weeks go on, and he doesn't look super impressive until it is showtime. So, at this point, you cannot really get the idea. I mean, his legs do look, do look a little bit uh, fatty, watery, whatever. He doesn't look that impressive, but when he's on the stage, it's a different story. Here you can see the body fat percent, and it's a decent body fat percent for how many weeks he has left. Maybe like, how many weeks is that? That's like uh, 12 weeks now, yeah? About 12 weeks until Mr. Olympia, that's a decent body fat percent. He knows what he's doing, he's done this a couple of times, so yeah, he's gonna be ready and most likely, like 99%, he's going to win the Mr. Olympia no matter what, unless something unexpected happens to him, some kind of misfortune, if everything goes well, if everything runs smoothly, he is winning that show, no doubt. Anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. All the best and bye-bye.